Okay, Couture Crafters, let's get into this Slim Line album. So these are regular number 10 envelopes. Actually, they're not regular. They have that lining on the inside. And if you can get some that don't have that security lining, you'll be better off for it. Because I was like, what is this blue stuff on the inside of the envelope? Here, I'm just trimming off a little less than a quarter, um, like an eighth. Make sure that you're consistent with all four pieces. And now I'm trimming this paper at eight by nine and a quarter. Again, I'm trimming it down to eight by nine and a quarter. And I did two sheets and that's 110 pound cardstock. It doesn't have to be, but you know, I like to my paper to be a little more sturdy. And then I just scored it down the middle at four and folded it in half. And scoring is simply putting an indentation on some paper, getting it ready to fold. You could do this with a ruler and an old ballpoint pen or whatever you have. You don't necessarily have to have a scoreboard like me. So now I'm sticking my hand through the envelope because we cut off the, the tip there. And I'm just pulling the flap on the inside. Now I'm going to take some glue and I'm using liquid glue for this. And I'm going to open up that flap and we're going to glue the flap down. I don't know why I have my other hand in there right this second, but I do. And we're going to put glue all on that flap. You see that blue side? I wish that that blue wasn't there, but you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. And now I'm just sticking it down and burnishing it. Now we're going to take our next envelope and we're going to fold it backward, that, that um, flap. We're going to fold the flap backward on itself. And see, we're just going to stick it inside just like that. I'm just testing it right now to make sure it'll go in nicely, making sure that there's no gaps. And it looks good. It'll fold over on itself nicely. No worries. See that blue paper? Oh my goodness. I hate that I had those envelopes. But like I said, you get what you get. You don't throw a fit. I had them here. I didn't go out and buy anything. So now I'm going to take the glue and I'm going to put it on the inside flap, like right there on the blue side. And then I'm going to flip it over and slide it in to that envelope pocket. Now for the first couple, because I'm only doing four envelopes, you see how the, the left hand side has that X, you know, the, the flap and the right hand side is smooth. That's what you want to do for the first one. And for the second one, the third one, we're going to flip it around. You can really do these however you want. You know, it's, it's just not that serious. Just glue some envelopes together and then you'll have an album. <laughs> the main thing you want to really watch right here is you really don't want to take that glue all the way down to the fold. You want to give it a little room for your album to grow if it's going to be a chunky album like mine ended up being a little chunkier than I kind of wanted, but whatever. So see, I'm not going to take the glue all the way down to the fold. I'm just kind of leaving about an inch actually, which is a good amount say anywhere from a quarter to an inch and I'm just slipping it in there and jiggling it until it's straight which is why I like to use liquid glue instead of double-sided tape right here anytime you need to wiggle you want to use wet glue and then we're just going to push it down and burnish it so now I should have three envelopes all glued together and now we're going to flip this one because we want the back to be smooth so I'm going to put the glue on the outside of the flap this time. You see how I left an inch down there? About an inch, somewhere between a quarter and an inch. And you're just going to wiggle that puppy in there. And so when I close it, I'm going to have a smooth on the back. The back is going to be smooth. And there we have it. Guys, if you want to stop watching right now, that's really all there is to this album. The rest of it is a whole bunch of decorating. It's like another 40 minutes of just me decorating, but that's the album right there. 
And then the box, um, I should put a timestamp to when the box starts. I'll let you guys know. I'll put that down there. So that way you really don't have to um, keep watching. So those other, oh, I forgot about this part. Just kidding. It's not quite finished. These two panels I put on the inside two envelopes. So all of them at this point are open. If you don't want the envelopes to be open and you're not going to put anything in there, not a problem. Just glue them shut. Not a problem at all. But I wanted to add a gatefold to it. So you see on this left hand side, because of the way that the envelopes are, I'm putting the glue on the back of that paper. If I put it on the front, I would be touching the glue when it comes through because you can see it in the hole right there. See? I am not really concerned that all my whites are different. You know, it just kind of happens. So it's like, whatever, not a big deal. And so we're going to do the same thing on the other side, but I'm going to put the glue on the front of this card, because if I put it on the back, you see all that blue section there that that's going to be, it could cause problems. So I'm putting this on the front and then I'm just going to open it and just slip it down in there. And because the height of that panel is a little less, I just try to center it so that they're even. It's slightly less, not much, just a touch, maybe less than an eighth. And here I'm wiggling and jiggling until I get it right, until I'm satisfied. And now the album is complete. The rest of it is just a ton of decorating. I haven't done a video this long in forever. Um, I don't love super long videos like this. Like who wants to watch me decorate for an hour? But hey, if you want to, I'll be here with you. So that's it. So then we have a gatefold there and then you flip it and then you flip it again and bam, slimline envelope album. What? Again, that's open. If you don't want them open, just glue it. Just put some glue right there and cover it with your cardstock. I didn't want that open. So I am gluing it. And if you were to keep it open, there's a ton of things that you can do. This one, I kept thinking that I was going to take some full size Christmas trees and fold them in half and make them tags and flip outs and all that kind of stuff. However, yeah. Mm -mm. This album took me so much longer than I had anticipated. I forget, you know, decorating can take a while if you are making your own embellishments. If I had just had a bunch of stickers on hand or whatever, I would have been okay. But this took me a little longer than anticipated and I didn't have enough pictures. So I was chasing it. This was just, I don't know. But I was dying to do a slim line with this really neat, um, function in the center so I'm like eh, eh. <laughs> this, uh, this took a little more effort than anticipated but it's a really cool album in my opinion so here we go so now we're going to start decorating this picture I didn't even use and it was probably one of the best dishes at the um at the festival of holidays where you go around with that and then you give them those little white tabby things and then they give you food and you get to taste all the different foods from the different booths, yada, yada, yada. So much fun hanging out with the girls. So here I'm doing what's called cropping these pictures. I'm cutting off the excess. I printed all these pictures on my home Canon printer. That video has like a thousand views, if not more. Um, people really are interested in my review on that. I love it. That Canon works wonders for me. It prints 12 by 12 borderless and that's really what I needed and it does it you know it's ands butts about it and it'll do it on very thick heavy cardstock so I'm pleased so you've seen these frame dies I'm sure everybody and their mother has them now and I love them and honeybee came out with the slimline yes I am all about slimline. The world just got on slimline, but I've been doing this. Like this is not new to me. Slimline is my jam because I do not do A2 cards. And so what happens is you send the die through and it cuts a ton of frames at one time. Those are all the frames that it cuts. And then you just layer them however you want. You can layer them like I'm doing. You can do all one color. I'm really, really, really dying to work with them in black and white. Um, really looking forward to doing that so 
stay tuned for a slimline black and white card using all those frames. I don't know the dimensions of that sucker, but it's smaller than the envelope when it's finished. And because this is my first time working with these frames, this really doesn't make sense the way that I decided to do it. But I did it anyway. Um, what I should have done was cut three sheets of paper that were smaller than this die and then glued all the way around the frames. Instead, I just put that tape in certain places and I ended up having to stick my fine needle point glue thingy underneath to try to glue it down better. Because look right here, you can see the where it's kind of lifting in some areas. It just was not, you know, it was my first go round. I just wanted to play with it. And you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. So now I know I've got to watch Jennifer McGuire's video on how she did hers because she, of course, perfected how to work with this. Um, and I have not yet. So what I did is what you saw. And I got these panels and they make me so happy. I would love to have doors like this in my house, which would drive some people crazy. Yeah, people would think that I had lost my mind with all the stripes that I have around here. But I like stripes, so whatever. And then I decided to use this last panel on the back. I think I cut, yeah, I cut three colors and I got three out of that. I think that's what I did, but I had some leftover, so... I ended up using another panel, but if you hang for this whole 45 minute video or 50 minute video or hour long video, you'll see when I use the other one. And so this is the very back of the Slimline album and I'm putting some cardstock down and then I'm just putting some glue on the back. That little bottle of glue has lasted me like forever. As you can see, the bottle is all dingy looking and whatnot. I have some new bottles, but I haven't used them. I just refill that one every now and then. But I'm telling you, that glue has lasted me quite some time. And as you see here, there's you see where it's lifted a little bit. I'm just tucking some glue here and there to make it lie down smoothly. Ooh, I really like how that looks. Now, the surprise for this is that, yes, it's a Christmas in July album, but I wanted to do a frozen um, insert in the in the center. So here I printed that paper. I bought that paper off of Etsy. Really like that. Matter of fact, I bought three or four um, paper packs from Etsy. And now I just want to do a whole frozen album because some of these papers are so cool. Here I am cutting it down and I'm being cognizant about how I'm cutting the paper. I wanted to make sure I got the whole group there. And there you go. And so I was checking the size and I'm cool with that size. And on the outside flaps, I wanted it to really not have a lot of a border. So I, I'm cool with the way that that came out. And here's a, a sheet of Elsa's. So pretty. Um, if you guys could see this close up, it's such a dreamy, such a dreamy uh, paper pack. And so I'm thinking about where I want these to go and how I want them to close. This step is unnecessary. I actually hate that I did this. I could have done just one magnet. I did not need to do two and you don't need to do any because actually it closes. I thought it wasn't going to close and I was going to need to, I was just wrong. It's two left feet. Again, this is my first time doing it. So, oh well, but when I tell you these magnets are strong, they are so strong. I get my magnets from eBay, not Amazon. They're thinner on eBay. And you see, I used double-sided tape and taped it down. And then I just dropped the magnet on the other magnet after it's been taped down to see which side it likes the best. Then I pick it up and I put the magnet down with the tape facing up. So I'm ripping off another piece of double-sided tape and I'm putting the magnet on it the same way that it came down, the same way that it was, you know, before. And make sure you clip it so that it's not hanging off the sides. And now I just close it. 
and close it. And now the magnets are on the other side. And then I just burnish them with my fingers. And that's how I install magnets. And then I just take the tape off and put glue down or double-sided tape, whatever, or glue stick, whatever you're using. You know, it dawned on me, I could have done this double-sided. I could have printed it on one side and then the other side. And that way I wouldn't have had so much leftover paper. <laughs> Hindsight. And then I just burnish around those magnets to make sure that the paper has a good adherence to the back. And just take off the tape again. I use my what are those things called? Pen blades? Pen blades? I really like those things. I stink at using blades, but I like to have those around. They come in handy a lot. When I tell you that thing is shut, like, man, I tell you, those magnets are so strong. I like them, but they were not necessary for this. So you can totally omit that step if you'd like, or just put one in the center. And that would have been sufficient. And we've got Arendelle on this last picture. Using liquid glue again. Sticking it down and burnishing it. And there you have it. Here we go. Karen Burnison. She is the, one of the queens of pop up, pop out. I really like her design. She doesn't have a ton of them, but the ones that she does make you think that you can do so much with them. And so this is the photo collage die. And here I'm showing you, I just drew some um, arrows. I just darken the dots. There are four dots on there and I darken them. And then I drew an arrow outward and then down. They're just kind of following around. For this part, you're going to need to go to her video and watch how she does it. I'm showing you a few things, but she's the one who's going to truly walk you through how to do this. I'm just giving you a just an idea of what I did, but you really need to watch her video, and I'm definitely going to link that below. And now I'm just training the paper to know how to fold, and then I just push it all together. This paper is poop. It's Recollections, um, 100 pound cardstock. It, you see that it's cracking and whatnot. It's, it works, but you see all that cracking. I'm not, I'm not loving that. And now I'm just marking the back. So I'm going to rotate it around. I'm going to look for that big arrow, which is pointing at a corner. And I'm going to mark that corner with my pencil on the back. And I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to darken it. Now, again, her video will walk you through exactly what to do. So this part right here, you would go to her video for because this is a whole nother, <laughs> this is a whole nother step here. Now you're going to go ahead and put tape. You want to put tape close to that triangle fold. But what that little mark for it is to remind you to stay away from that area. So you want to leave that area that has the pen mark with no tape. That whole side right there, I just kind of leave so that it gives this little mechanism a little room to wiggle and breathe. So on the other side, and I'm just using double-sided tape right here. Um, you can use glue, but I'm not fooling with that. And so I'm releasing all the papers on one side only. And yes, I have my paper, my tape overlapping, not worried about it. And now we're going to take the album. And I just have one side that's released. And I put that one side down, trying to get it as straight as possible. You look through that center hole and make sure that it's on the crack. And now you take these four little arms that you cut out with the die set. and you place them you make sure the angle is the right angle if not just flip it over and this one goes behind it and this is all white again in her video she has some colors where you can actually see what's going on 
me i'm just giving you a quick glance with how i put this album together and then i started fiddling with it and if you think about it it really doesn't make sense because it's not fully connected right here yet which is why we didn't glue down that other side connecting it now and that's how it's going to look and now it's working properly so you attach that all the way and I'm taking off the release paper actually before I attach it so when this touches down that's all she wrote sort of uh, my trick is that <laughs> they have that undo for tape if you put tape down and you shouldn't have but anyway there you go now I'm going to start prepping the pictures okay so now we are decorating the pictures and I just dropped these pictures from my phone into word and I sized them to 1.25 by 1.25 I should have sized them down just a touch like 1.25 two or maybe a little smaller and so now I just put them on the arms again you need to refer to Karen's video for that her first video shows eight photos on the collage but you could probably get more than 10 on here she's got another video where she does 10 plus and I think I could have figured out how to do probably more. And it's really cool because it just kind of keeps growing and growing. One of the tricks is using tape, um, using a tape runner so that you can adjust and readjust. Because the reason why I didn't show this is because it's a lot of that. I put it a, a somewhere and then I close it, then I open it, then I close it, then I open it and I close it. And I did that quite a bit. It didn't take that long, but again, I did that quite quite a bit it's fun actually I really enjoyed doing this I want to do more and you know what I will be doing more so expect to see this again someplace and isn't that cool don't you get like oh bam wow factor and then I had absolutely no clue what to do with the rest so I busted out this last Christmas pack of paper that I have because I gave away all my paper because I was tired of looking at it I'm glad that I kept this Christmas paper because, again, red and green. That's what we're doing today. Christmas in July. And so I'm just straightening up this paper and cutting it down. And now I'm about to do a bunch of matting. And matting is simply putting paper down in front of the paper, in front of the pictures, blah, 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 to create the look that you're going for. So I know that I want red and green throughout the entire album. And I'm using this tape runner. I don't know the brand or name of that. I know that Jennifer McGuire uses it. So I went ahead and tried it. And I like it because you can put something down and then lift it up real quick. And it doesn't stick immediately. The other tape runner that I was using from Michaels, when you put it down, it's down. You know, you really got to be careful with that. Here you have a little bit of time. So I grabbed a 12 by 12 sheet of paper out of that paper stack. And I cut it down and split it and see it's just a continuous sheet but I just cut it down to size I love paper so much guys I would really just want to do an album with just paper and no pictures do not be afraid to cut into your pictures cut people out cut circles put stuff on top of your pictures just don't be limited by your pictures um I printed these pictures I think I was going for three and a half by three and a half which is one of the built-in sizes for my Canon um yeah it's three and a half by three and a half and then I think I did some four by six and I think they have three by five they've got some strange sizes built in and I was able to use I think I used three or four by I don't know I forget but I printed all these pictures out of my Canon and boy, did we have fun that day. I wish I could go back to that day. Putting this album together, I was really like, huh. You know, it, I don't do the finished albums, like putting pictures in the albums, because again, that's not my favorite part. I prefer to just look at paper. And as you can see, this photo is glitter. I printed it on glitter paper. 
uh, Staples had some glitter paper, glitter photo paper, and I loved it because I had glitter lipstick on that day anyway, and it just comes out so cool. But actually putting pictures in an album really takes you back and it's it feels good and when I open it I smile I'm like look at this so this is what photo albums are all about I've been making many albums for how long guys and when I tell you I could care less about putting a photo in there <laughs> finishing the album like no thank you but actually finishing this album was fun and if I had had more time I probably would have put everything in this album but the kitchen sink because that's the kind of person that I am now that blue paper there is again annoying me and I can see it and it's not white and so I went ahead and grabbed some washi. I am not a washi fan. I'm happy that I had this washi though because I just put it down the center so that you can't see that blue paper when I put the uh, decorative paper down. And as you can see on some pages I have the paper going all the way to the end. On some other pages, I have it with a white border from the envelopes around it. Do not feel restricted. You know, just kind of do what you feel. Whatever, there are no rules to this. There are no photo album police. There probably are, but who cares? Do what you feel and be okay with it. So I was just making sure that it opened and closed pretty cool. And this paper, again, is from that same paper stack. So I've used one paper stack and some um, eight and a half by 11 sheets. A couple of those, not even a lot of them, if I'm being perfectly honest. Because remember, this album only has four pages, excluding the, the gatefold. There's not a, I thought this album was going to be so fast. And, uh, it took me a little longer than I thought. Here's another sheet of paper from that stack. I really, really like this stack. I like Christmas paper, though, because I like Christmas time. But I just love the stacks for the holidays. Like, ugh. I have a couple of six by six stacks left, but I don't have any ideas for any holiday six by six anything. So, so much for that. Oh. Look what I did. I mixed the paper. I didn't think I did that, but I did. And there is another picture of me and a picture of me and the girls and another picture of me. I wish I had had more pictures of the girls because I could have sent this to this album out, but I don't think anybody wants these big old pictures of me in there. I decided I was going to mat the photo on the background. The picture was just getting lost with the background paper. So grab something that reads as a solid and put it behind your photo when that happens to break it up to give the eye a place to kind of rest and frame into something. So these are just scraps that I had cut out of that. And you see I'm leaving a slight border around the outside. So I'm putting the glue there and then I'm leaving like an eighth of a border and then I'll cut. I'm just going to eyeball the other two sides. You'll see me do that in just a second. Here's the paper trimmer. And I'm just eyeballing it, trying to leave about an eighth around the outsides. And bam, there we go. Photo matted. I really want to do some more intricate mats, like the kind of matting that you see in a frame. But I just haven't had the right project to do it yet. or the time and so here I'm playing with the layout a bit I'm realizing I'm gonna have to crop that chip and deal down I think I took out one of the chipmunks I don't know which one. Oh yeah he had to go and I'm not necessarily measuring a lot of this I'm eyeballing I'm just using the paper trimmer, but yeah, even though I whip out that ruler like a million times, watch when we get a little further in the video, you go see how I made a boo boo and which is crazy because I'm measuring constantly and I didn't measure one element and it did not fit. We'll see it together. And here we are more glue. 
Again, when you need to wiggle, the best thing to use is liquid glue. I can't believe you guys are still here with me while I'm doing this. If you've made it this far, you are truly somebody who rolls with me. Okay, so I left that front flap open because I wanted to put a tag on the inside. I thought it was going to be a Christmas tree. I just was all over the place with the front of this album. I knew it was going to have to be decorated last, though, because I wasn't sure if this album was going to close, if it was going to be too chunky. You know, I just wasn't 100% sure. So here I am measuring again. Look at me, just a measuring away. And not retaining any of the measurements. Just, just measuring, not retaining anything. <laughs> and I did some print to cut with my Cricut for my embellishments. And here are some stamp sets that I love by Photoplay. I, I can't find them. I don't know where they are. It says made in China, but... These stamps were extremely affordable and they work like a dream. I love them and I would buy every set they had if I could find them. But when I Googled them, they didn't have a website and then a few stores had a few, but nothing that I really was drawn to. But I, if you see some and you like them, trust those stamps. They work beautifully. Here's something else I cut out with my Cricut. I just made a big tag since it is a Christmas themed album and I thought well wouldn't that be cool to pull out a tag on a Christmas present because the front ends up being decorated like a Christmas present so I took quite a bit of time to make sure that this lines up because this was not just a tag that they had in the Cricut I had to kind of put this one together and play with it but I am a beast in design space so if I can think of it I can probably make it in design space it might take me a little while but I can do it and I wanted to make sure the holes lined up perfectly. You should have seen how much time I spent making this stupid tag design space. Now watch right here. Uh, it does not fit. You can't see up there at the top, but it's a little bit too long. So then I thought, okay, I'll just chop the top off. Why did I do that? That just wasn't smart. Just, just wasn't smart. Now look at it. Is that cute? It is not. So I took it down a little further which really isn't cute either, but it's going to have to do because I refuse to cut another one. And now it fits. What a mess. <laughs> Anytime you have those little fuzzies because your paper trimmer is pulling and ripping your paper, grab a nail file, which I just keep over there that I don't use on my nails, and file your paper. Sand it. Sand it right now. I decided to put a picture on one side of the tag and we're throwing some glue on the back that's glitter paper some of them are glitter and some of them are just glossy and the ones in the center in the frozen are all matte randomly I tried printing on regular glossy paper and that was a fail. So if you're doing glossy prints, make sure it's photo paper that you are printing on. Otherwise, your ink might not actually set, settle into the paper. So here are some more embellishments that I purchased off Etsy. It was a cut file from Etsy and it worked pretty good. I'm always leery of SVGs from Etsy, but this one worked pretty good. And that H is just a Waltograph H that I threw in my Cricut. And now I'm getting ready to do some paper piecing. All those images that I print to cut, I flatten those images so I didn't have to paper piece them, but they could have been pieced also. Every now and then I like to piece. Matter of fact, I will probably be piecing on an upcoming project, but I don't know when that's going to happen. But every now and then I'll get into piecing real heavy. So these are the little Santas that are going to go on the front. My little Mickey ear Santas. And this is what piecing really looks like. It takes a while. It's a lot of wiggling and jiggling until you figure out the puzzle piece. And then you're like, okay. So that's what I did for those three. And now for the one that's going in the middle, I really want to make it a standout embellishment. So I start stacking it. Stacking and stacking and stacking. 
and more stacking. I stacked. I accidentally cut more than I needed. And I knew that I wanted to stack some, but I thought I would stack three. Instead, I ended up stacking five. And I loved it. It was such an embellishment. I noticed that people stack their dies all the time now. It's just a thing. And so I ended up stacking five H's for the center and then five for the Minnie Mouse. The other two are Mickey's, Mickey Christmas ears. And then the one in the middle is a Minnie. And I just used, I just cut her bow out of some, some scrap green cardstock. Here are two of my print to cut images. And print to cut simply means that I printed the Mickey and my Cricut cut around my Mickey instead of cutting out all those different colors and then putting them on top of one another. Which I could have done too, but that would have been a lot of work. I wanted to do some vinyl elements on here, but time just did not permit for me to really go into this album. And again, this is supposed to be a super fast album, but the way I decorated it made it take a little longer. It doesn't have to take this long. All right. So we plop them down and now it's really just about adding these decorative elements all over the place. This album is small and it has a lot going on in the background. So I didn't want to do too much. I did those stamps and die cuts of that photo play stamps that I was telling you about earlier that I used in a different video. They're off to the left. I just did it in black and white so that it didn't pull too much focus from what I have going on already. And so there we are. I think it's so funny. It seems like this is a lot of pages, but really it's not. And now I'm just going through figuring out where those will fit best. Nothing special. So now let's move on to the cover. I knew that I wanted this to look like a present and these are papers that I happen to have had in that stack. So I just decided to use them. And I did one and a quarter strips for the red. So for the red, we're just going to trim it up. And instead of measuring, because it was a really strange measurement, the length, I just put the paper on where I needed it and then I marked it that way you can't really get too much more exact than that and so I'm trying to straighten up that paper because of the design I wasn't sure I'm like is it straight is it not straight it kind of has an illusion to it you know I love me some argyle argyle and stripes I just like prints anything except for a chevron print I do not care for chevron prints it they bug me so bad so here we are. Um, I know I wanted the green to be down the center. And so apparently I just glued it down after measuring it. Oh yeah, I took it all the way to the side so that the red strips on the outside would be the same size and whatever they were is what the, you know, subtracted from the green. I didn't have to worry about it. I didn't have to worry about measuring the green the red strips were going to be one and a quarter. So whatever that left the green is what it left the green. I did not divide this equally into three. Okay. And for this side, because these envelopes have that blue on the side, it just didn't look super neat. So I decided to wrap it. So I measured one and a quarter and I marked it and then I moved that paper to where it was one and a quarter and now I'm wrapping it around and I'm looking at it and I'm like wow that paper comes over way further than I wanted it to so I pull out my trimmer and I trim it down trim down I took about a half an inch off and that way it left a little bit more of my background it's the back, not super duper worried about it, but it's a lot going on back there with that print and then that other print. And I just burnish it. Boy, I like the way that looks, but I like slimline. 
you know, I think slim lines are sexy. I don't want to see anything except for slim lines. So the fact that the world has gone slim line crazy makes me very happy. And we'll throw Goofy on the back. Yeah, and I went ahead and placed him so that he was touching both prints just to kind of ground it a little bit. And there we have it. So now, guys, I don't love belly bands, but I thought this one needed it. So I cut this strip down to one and a quarter so that we have some continuity going. And I just wrapped it around the album. Don't love belly bands, but this one here, it works. Once I got it where I wanted it, it's not too tight and it's definitely not too loose. I just put some glue down and held it. I love this glue because it sets up quick. It could be a gift and a curse, but I'd really prefer it to set up quick. And then I play with it a little bit, and now it's time to start decorating the front. And we're going to put a ho, ho, ho on there. And we're going to do some tilting. And I knew that I wanted one of the hoes to go on the belly band. You can't see now, but in person, there's so much dimension on the one in the middle. It's so cute. Now, I knew that I was going to have to glue these bad boys down really well because that belly band has got to be able to slide over the top or the bottom. So I made sure to put a lot of glue on that H and a lot of glue on that Mickey head. I love the elements that are pieced and the ones that are print to cut. Um, they really add different textures to the album, which is fun. So we're just gonna plop Mickey and Mickey down there at the bottom, Mickey and Minnie. Look at how thick that is. Did you see it from the side? So cool. That's how you make your paper stick around for a while. Like if you were going to do a paper ornament, stack them. <laughs> and that way it makes it super stiff. And if you use wet glue, it makes it kind of like cement. And if I want to reinforce paper, I will glue paper to paper with wet glue. And it totally makes it hard. All right, we're making the top now. I cut one at six and a quarter by 12 and the other one by six and no I think it's six and a half by 12 and then the other one six and a quarter by 11 and three quarters and now I am scoring all both of these sheets at the one inch mark yeah one six and a half by 12 and the other one is six I just took a quarter down And now we're gonna make this. Now this paper is not as sturdy as I would like it to be. So I'm gonna do that trick I was just telling you about and glue some paper on the inside. Ideally, you should be gluing probably 110 pound paper, 100 pound paper, 80 pound paper. But I didn't do that. <laughs> I, just, I just glued some designer paper to it. It still worked perfectly fine. So I cut the notches. Same way that I always do, nothing special. You cut the line and then you tilt your scissors and you cut out a little triangle. I have shown how to make boxes on tons of my albums because I believe albums need boxes. And then you just pinch it. Again, if you go back and look at my video and slow it down, you'll see I just cut straight and then I angle the scissors to the left on the right hand side and just whoop, cut out a little triangle and then the same thing on the other side. If you didn't see it good, look at the other album that I just did before this video. I think it's like two videos ago and I make a box and I have a, it's very, very, very slow and very clear what to do. And now I'm just putting some glue on these tabs. And forming my box a little bit. And there we have both the bottom and the top. And I was like, shoot, I need to decorate the top, I guess. 
I almost didn't, and I probably shouldn't have because it is not the best decorating job, but it'll get it. It'll work. And we're just going to check the fit, and it fits fine, and it closes fine with no problems. Yay. And so I was like, oh, I need to put something on the top of this box. And so I just went ahead and did another one of those panels. And I cut a Merry Christmas tree. And then I lined the box because, you know, I believe all boxes need to be lined. I lined it with some plaid paper. And here's a walkthrough. And I did a little punch out right there so that you can grab the tag out. And that's the back. So that you can write a little sentiment on there to somebody or talk about your trip. And there's some glitter paper with some embellishments and here's the coolest thing ever wait for it bam frozen spread love that <laughs> and here's the last page and that's it can you believe it all that work for that very 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 short album Love it. Love how this little belly band goes on top. I don't even like belly bands, but it works. You guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you've done this full 45, 46 minutes with me, you are truly uh, my people. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I will see you guys in the next video. And let me know if you try this.